Well, it seems, it doesn't, I know it hasn't been, but it seems like it's, it's been a little while since we've been together. And, um, but the last time I was before you, we, we spoke about identity. We talked about identity. Identity is simply this. Identity is the essence, the essence of who we are as defined by God. Y'all remember that? We talked about identity again. Identity is the essence of who we are as defined by God. If you remember, I used the example of an old school cartoon. We talked about underdog. Y'all remember that? Yes. And we talked about underdog and we talked about uh, the story of David in 1 Samuel chapter uh, 17. And, 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 and we knew that going into that situation versus Goliath, that David was the underdog. He was the one that was supposed to have the disadvantage, the one that was supposed to be on the losing end. But what we really focused on is simply this, is that what to do when being labeled an underdog moves from just being something that you're called to something that you think about yourself. In other words, when, when, when something moves from being a label to actually becoming your identity. We concluded that when it comes to identity, when it comes to, 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 to that, that there are three simple truths to remember in relation to when you're in that mindset, when you're struggling again, trying to prevent a label from becoming your identity, per, trying to prevent uh, that thing you did, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From you becoming that thing, you know? Uh, oh, well, you're a this, or you're a that, or you're a, no, 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 I, I, I did that, but I'm not going to be labeled Amen. as that. Amen. So, there were three truths that we talked about, and, and the first one was simply this, is if you're having that struggle, if you're having that battle, it's simply this, is to remember that when you're close to God, you don't forget who you are. Yes. Amen? Yes. You, you don't forget who you are. And in terms of identity, that when you're close to God, you don't forget who you are. When you're close to God, not only do you not forget who you are, but you don't forget what God has done. Amen? So you know who you are, and you know what God has done in your past. You know what God has done before. And finally, when you're close to God, not only do you know who you are, not only will you not forget what he's done, but you also won't forget what he will do. Amen. Amen. You won't forget what he will do. Amen. Anybody got a need for God to do something in their life? Amen. Amen. So what I want to do is I want to continue today uh, speaking on identity. And I want to keep journey, journeying, journeying, I want to keep going. I want to keep going. I want to keep going through 1 Samuel. And I want to keep looking at the life and the faith of the future King David. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you, when the Lord put this on my heart uh, to, to share uh, out of 1 Samuel to talk about David and Goliath, I was thinking, ah, that's easy. No problem. We'll, we'll get to him throwing the slingshot here in about two, three weeks. No, 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 no. It's not that simple. So we're going to stay on this until, uh, until David takes care of Goliath for once and for all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But before we get too far into our sermon today, I, I want to try to, if, if, if you would give me the allowance, if you would uh, just be patient with me, I, I want to try to, instead of saying it to you today, I'd like to show it to you. I, I like to show you 
the sermon uh, as opposed to just saying it. So, so I want to kind of illustrate this. And, and so in order for me to, to do this, I, I need, uh, I need a, a volunteer. Uh, I need a, a, a voluntold. Uh, I, need a, um, uh, I need a beautiful young uh, assistant uh, to come give me a hand as you guys encourage her as she comes uh, to the platform. Now, uh, we need to make sure that we give you a microphone because that's going to be the first thing that you're going to need. So we make sure that the pink, oops, whoo, that's hot, uh, is on. Now, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm tired. And uh, I think that knowing you, Knowing who you are, knowing a lot about you, I know you love God. I know you love the Lord. Yes, yes you do. And I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you are destined for some great thing. Yes. Yes. You are. You are. Yes. You are. You have uh, so much untapped potential, it's scary. Uh, what you're going to become in a good way. So I have confidence because of who you are, because of that, you know, I think I'm just going to, I think I'm going to step down. Yeah, I, I think, I think uh, you are ready to be the pastor of CCLD. So, you've already got the first thing you need, which is a microphone, right? So you're good. Now, if you're going to fill in, if you're going to take my place, and I mean, you're already my, 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 my DNA, my flesh, and you already got that going on, but, but you gotta, you, you got to have the look. Oh. You got. I mean, I know some people say we look. You like, I don't know, but but you, you got to have the look. So 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 in order to to to, to be like me, uh, you got to dress like me. Oh. And in order to dress like me, you, you see, I got these Jordan. You see, you got you got to put some J's on to uh, uh, to be able to maneuver the the. the you got, right? Yes? Yes? Yeah, yeah, put them on, please. You, you can't see this. You, you, you got to. You're putting on a couple of things. Yeah, there you go. See that? That's the fashion statement. Look at you. Look at you. An interesting statement. An interesting statement. Okay, okay. Now, 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 well, wait a second, second. You got the microphone, you got the shoes. Now, in order to really, comp see, I, I like that blue and that black, but you really got to kind of tie that thing in, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to really make it all coordinate, let's just make sure <laughs> that, that you can, because, you know, like say, you're taking my place now, so you got to look like, and you got to wear, and this is, yeah, there you go. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, oh, wait, that's, okay, all right, all right. So now that, now, now, wait, wait, come, come over here, come over here, be, be, be careful, be careful, come, come this way, you got to come over here. Now, see, you know, when I preach, I like to move around sometimes. Uh -huh. So you got to come over here. You got to look at these folks sometimes. Mm -hmm. and if they're looking at you mean or something, you got to look back at them just to make sure that, you know, uh -huh. and, and, and these people are generally okay. They're, they're typically kind of nice. Over here now, see your mom, you know, she, she, you know, she, she helps the rest of them. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So w walk over there, make sure you can get over there. And, 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 and okay, now watch yourself. Don't trip. Yeah. Now, you're the pastor. So what you're preaching about today? Your message. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to you. I'll give the mic back. We'll just switch. I'll give everything back to you. I don't want it. I don't want it. It's yours. 
I don't want it. Not going to do it. We're having a steering contest today. <laughs> steering contest? But you have the microphone. You have my coat. You got my shoes. You have what it takes to be me. <laughs> All right. You don't have my, oh. Oh? Yet. Right. <laughs> Yet. That's true. Yet. All right. So, my point in trying to show you this, my point in trying to illustrate this, is simply this. It is utterly ridiculous for my daughter to try to preach, operate, move, fight, whatever, to, to navigate this, she, it would be ultimately ridiculous for her to do or try to do that in all of this stuff because this was made for me. Right. It was made for me. It fits me. It looks good on me. <laughs> Right? It fits me, but for her, it doesn't fit. Right. So, since you don't have a sermon today, I'm at least going to let you share the sermon title today. Okay. okay? So come over here. The sermon title is this. <laughs> If it's not thin, it's not hitting. <laughs> if it's not fitting, it's not hitting. Okay, I'm sorry. They, they, they want it proper. Because they, they, we got teachers and stuff in the house. Okay. If it isn't fitting, it is not, it is not hitting. It is not. If it is not. If, oh, see. I'm an English major, too. Look at this. Okay, you want to do some of the sound? If it ain't? Oh, my God. Okay. Let's give my beautiful daughter a hand as she returns to her seat. Gets out of this swarming coat. And those... Yeah, and I'm put, no, yeah, put them out the way because I'm going to trip over them myself <laughs> if they're out in the way. So, so say it with me. It was not fitting. It's not fitting. It ain't hitting. It ain't hitting. One more time. It was not fitting. It's not fitting. It's not hitting. It's not hitting. So where we are, when we jump back into our text, we have been in the book of 1 Samuel. We have been looking at the life of David. We have been seeing uh, just situation after situation in the future king's life. And one of the things that we discover is simply this, is that David shows up at the battlefield. He shows up at the battleground, not with the intention to fight. There was nothing about David that said, hey, I'm going to go up there and see if I can kill a giant today. No, David was there running an errand. David was there dropping off some snacks. David was there to bring back a report on what's been going on with his brothers and the battle. Now he gets there and all of a sudden he sees that his side, his, bro his boys, his army, all of these guys are paralyzed in fear and on the other side are all of the Philistines. And one in particular who is mocking, who's disrespecting God, who is calling him out who is talking about David's mama up and down, yeah. back and forth, right. disrespecting, talking about his God, questioning. And so they look around and, and who's going to fight this giant? Yeah. <laughs> well, not me. Well, not me. Nobody could be found. 
And so the king, the one who you would think would step up to the plate, King Saul. <laughs> uh, I'm going to sit this one out. <laughs> uh, not me today. No, no, no. <laughs> and so David goes to the king and says, okay, since none of you guys have the heart, <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. And so David says this in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. David says, the Lord who rescued me from the claw of the lion and also the claw of the bear, <laughs> he's going to rescue me from this Philistine right here. So Saul finally said, ah, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to go. All right, you go ahead. And may the Lord be with you. Now watch this, y'all. Watch what happens next. It says, then, say then. then. Saul gave David his own armor. Saul gave David his own, his personal armor, a bronze helmet, and a coat of mail. Now, what we understand is this, is looking at this text, what this text tells us, number one, first of all, we know that Saul is the king, right? Saul is the king. Now, not only is Saul the king, so if he's the king, what does that mean? That means if Saul is the king, guess what he has? He has some kingly armor. Yeah. Right? He, he's not running. He, he doesn't have the, you, you know, the, the, the Walmart tin can special. He's got the customized, special, made to Saul, king or Dorn. So you know when you see his armor, you know that that's the king. He's got that kind of ha thing happening with his armor. Right. Right. Okay? Right. You understand that? Yeah. Now, but there's something else that you need to know about his armor. What you need to know about his armor is found about four chapters back. You ready? Yep. yep. All right, let's go for a journey. <laughs> All right, look at this. First Samuel chapter 13, verses 19, starting there. Now, the Bible says in regards to his armor, there were no, say no. no, no blacksmiths in the land of Israel in these days. The Philistines wouldn't allow them for fear they would make swords and spears for the Hebrews. So whenever the Israelites needed to sharpen their plowshares, to sharpen their picks, their axe, their tools, their sickles, they had to take them to a Philistine blacksmith. So on the day of battle, none, say none, none. say none. none, say zip, zip. say zero. zero, say zilch. Zip. None of the people of Israel had a sword, a spear, or armor except for Saul the king and his son the prince. Hmm. Okay, so now I see this thing differently. I see this one group of people over here and they ain't got nothing. I see this other group of people over here who are top to bottom in armor because they control the armor factory. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Y'all seeing the same thing I am? Yeah. Okay. So what we see then is that Saul, in case you missed it, is the only one besides his son that has armor. Okay? Yeah. So not only is Saul sitting here saying, I am going to give away my kingly armor. I'm going to give away my custom armor, but I'm basically giving away all the armor that we got. So let me ask you this. Why do you think 
that King Saul would give away what was designed to protect him. Why would he do that? Why would he do it? We'll talk about it in a second. See, there's lots of reasons, but for one, see, I think that in this situation, I think that Saul makes the same mistake that you and I make very often. And that is simply this, is that Saul is probably sitting there and he probably sees his army and he sees all of their armor. He sees all of their weapons. He saw the enemy's armor and he assumed that he needed to counter armor with armor. In other words, I see what the enemy has. I see what the threat has. So I need to look and act like the enemy. And since I'm not the one that's going to be fighting, I'm sitting this one out. The guy that I send is going to look and feel like the enemy. See, we all make that mistake in life. We, we all make that mistake that when the enemy does something or when the enemy has something, for some reason, I don't know what it is, we think that we need to do or get the same exact thing without stopping to ask God, what do you want for us, God? Yeah. Yeah. Without stopping to ask God, God, what am I, what, what am I supposed to trust you for? You see, I think that if we're really honest with ourselves, if we're really honest with ourselves, what we discover is simply this, is that, that well, I'm not going to say it like this, I'll just ask the question, is that how many of us, if we're honest, can say that, you know what, I have given away what God has for me by trying to walk in someone else's armor. I have given away. <laughs> I, 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 I have given away the calling, the purpose, the everything that God, I have given that away because <laughs> look, look at theirs. Theirs is shinier. Well, look at theirs. Theirs is pretty good. Oh, look, look I'm, I'm so busy looking at that I have disregarded what God has given me. I, I share this actually last week during the conference. God gave me a, a revelation about some things. And um, so, you know, I told y'all last week, last week is going to be different. And there were, there were so many people last week that if I'm being real honest with you, and I even told one of them, I said, you are every reason that I didn't want to get into ministry. Ooh, huh? I told him. I said, you are literally every single reason I said no to God. Well, what do you mean? Well, <laughs> oh, this guy, he could sing. I can't sing. My pastors growing up, oh, they could sing. Sing, sing, sing. They could modulate. I can do all that stuff. I can't do that. God, if you want me to preach, I can't do that. Oh. And then, you know, when I preach, I just kind of talk. I just kind of talk, you know, yeah. I don't get excited when I preach. I don't. She said, thank you. Now, now there's plenty of people that do and are great at it, yeah. Yeah. but that wasn't me. So I'm like, God, if I have to do that, you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong. 
And there was so much about this guy's ministry that I was just like, you are literally every reason why I kept telling God no, because I couldn't be that. I couldn't do that. And he looked at me and he says, well, I am thankful that God made you like you. You know, because I came up in that era, you know, oh, I'm going to be the next Bishop Jakes. And no, no, I could get ready, get ready all I want. But no, I wasn't going to be the next Jakes. It's no matter how hard I tried, I had long suits, too. I, I had buttons from here. It didn't help me none. It didn't help me none. So my, my, my whole story or, or what I'm trying to relate to all of us is simply this, is that God made us all as originals. So we should stop giving our armor away to live someone else's copycat lifestyle. We're all original. I, I shouldn't give my armor so I can look like you or preach like you or pray like you or sing like you or, or, or business like you. I can't do that. By the way, Saul here, I think all of us, we need this piece of advice that we learn in this story. And that's simply this. Will you please stop listening to people who won't put on their own armor, but sure want to tell you how to fight. Saul said, hey, I ain't got uh, no, no, no. But there's too many of us. We hear, we just, all these folks want to tell us how to do this and how to, and they won't put on their armor and get on the battlefield. Hey. Folk been divorced eight times talking about, oh, I wouldn't take that. Hey, you need to leave him. Like, you already did eight times. Why am I going to listen to you? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be nicer. So, let's go to the next verse, verse 39. Watch what David does. So Saul gives him his armor. Now, David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and you saw my daughter, you, he, he took a step or two in it to see what it was like. And the Bible says that he had never worn such things before. So David says this, he says, I can't go in these. He protested to Saul, because I am not used to them. <laughs> so David took them off. So three things that we see David did here. He tried, he tested, and then he took it off. Yep. Right? Yep. Say it. He tried, he, tried. he tested, he tested. Then, he took it off. then he took it off. Now, the interesting thing about this is that we hear this story. And for some reason in our mind, we think the narrative is like David shows up and then Saul just says, hey, here's my armor. And David's like, yeah, I, I can't. But can I tell you that this is not the first time that David had seen Saul's armor. It's not the first time that he had felt it. It's not the first time. Um, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, let's go back. One chapter. One chapter when they were looking for someone to play the harp to calm Saul's nerves. Chapter 16, verse 21 says this. It says that David went to Saul and began what? Serving him. Saul loved him very much and David became what? His armor bearer. His armor bearer. Huh. huh. So this wasn't the first time that David had picked 
that armor up. This wasn't the first time that David, you know, he probably cleaned that armor. He, he, he probably, he, he's the one that would carry this into battle for Saul. Right, right. So this wasn't David's first time. But it was the first time that David was going to fight in it. Now, this is what we know about the armor. According to scholars, Saul was probably about 6'4", maybe 6'5". Everybody else was probably normal size about that time, 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, six, five, seven in that area. So Saul, the Bible describes Saul as being head and shoulders above everyone else. Okay? So what we discover about Saul's army, uh, armor is simply this is that Saul's armor did not fit David physically. It didn't fit him physically. It was too big. It was too big. But you know what? It also didn't fit him spiritually. It didn't fit him spiritually. See, and, and, and this is the thing. Whenever we are trying to wear someone else's armor, whenever we are, are, are trying to operate in something outside of who God made us to be, we're walking around spiritually looking like my daughter was up here in oversized coats and big shoes tripping all over ourselves spiritually because when we are operating outside, side of what God calls to do, we look ridiculous spiritually. I look ridiculous trying to be T.D. Jakes. I look ridiculous trying to sing like Robin. I look, I mean, I, you, I look ridiculous because that is not what God called me to do. He didn't create me that way. Now, you say, well, okay, I can see why the armor didn't fit a shorter guy. But how are you saying that the armor doesn't fit him spiritually? How? Let me tell you how. Because the armor is not how God trained David. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Y'all remember that lion and bear training program I do, sure I do. that God put David on? Yeah, yeah. That when the lion came up, he grabbed him by the beard jaw, and when the, beer, uh, when the bear came up, he beat. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that when the lion came up, David grabbed his armor, right. <laughs> put his armor on, and right, right, right. doesn't say that. God prepared David a completely different way. A completely different way. So, I'm basically saying it like this. Just because something works for someone else doesn't mean that it's God's plan for us. And see, too often we compare, oh, I wish I could do this, and I wish I could be like that, and oh, I wish I spent so many years wishing, oh, I wish I could be, and I wish I could be, and I wish I could be. It, let me ask you this. Have you ever considered this? If you feel, oh, my, my armor doesn't fit, or, yeah. A have you ever considered that maybe that you... It's not that, 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 that you are too small for your armor, but maybe your anointing or your potential is just too big. You think? I mean, maybe what God has placed in you is so much bigger than what you're aspiring for, than what you're hoping for. The Bible says that he can do things, huh, what, exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could ask or even think. So maybe he's got something planned for you, a future, a, a career, whatever. He's got something way out, and you're sitting here trying to figure out why you can't fit in this. <laughs> Are y'all... Y'all love me? Yes. 
You sure? Yes. Why, you going to make us mad? I'm going to tell a story. Okay. I hope y'all love me after I tell a story. <laughs> um, so I'm talking to you again about fit, talking to you about, you know, um, so anybody like the people watch? Okay. So, you know, one of the things that if you are a, an avid people watcher, I guarantee you, leave here and go straight there. I promise you that if you go to Walmart, you're going to see something. You're going to see some people that will make you look again. And it never fails that whenever we go to Walmart, <laughs> my wife and I, all I need to do is look at her. And she'll say, don't say it. But I say, but babe. Well, she'll say, don't say it. Because what we will see sometimes is Someone whose spandex <laughs> is saying, call 911, help me. <laughs> and this is what we always say to one another. We say, that just because you can put it on doesn't mean it fits. Oh, y'all still love me? Am I right? That just because you can put it on don't mean it fits. Right? Same thing with calling, with gifting, with anointing, with just because you can doesn't mean that that's what God has created for you. Amen. Amen. It's good. See, we have to learn how to walk and be confident in how God made us and who God made us and how he equipped us. The Bible says that we are all wonderfully and fearfully made. In other words, we have to understand that God made no mistakes. It wasn't, why did I? No, you didn't get that because he didn't want you to do that. That wasn't the assignment that he put on your life. That's not the calling he gave for you. So don't look at that person and be hating him like, well, no, that's not for you. But we need to stop trying to be so discontent and, 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 and just trying to wear Saul's armor all the time. Ooh, if I could just, if I could, ooh, not, no, no, it's not for you. It's not for you. You cannot fight in someone else's armor. You can't fight in someone else's gifting. You can't fight in someone else's anointing. Okay? You can't do it. Cannot do it. Now, <laughs> you do what you want, right? You take me down to the bank in Nevada, put me in Jerry's office. Boy, y'all think y'all had some crisis before. <laughs> right? Don't put me inside of a vice president bank in Nevada. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to the bank. <laughs> right? But there's some things that I can do that Jerry would be like, uh, I'm going to leave that alone. Hmm. Right? But each one of us has that. And again, we need to say to ourselves, we need to be confident in our identity, in our, our purpose of how God created us to be, that I need to stop being a copy. I need to be an original. 
So you're saying, well, okay, pastor, I hear what you're saying. Okay, don't be a copy, be an original. Uh, well, how, how, how do I know how God has designed me? I don't know. How, how, how do I know? I'm glad you asked. Not this Wednesday, uh, because we are breaking for our uh, back to school bash, which you'll hear more about later. But the following Wednesday, on August the 28th at 6 p.m., we are going to have our Discover Your Design, your spiritual, our spiritual gifts class. class. Yeah. So for uh, the next four weeks, beginning on August the 28th, uh, we just finished up our breakdown of the Bible. We finished up the seven churches in Revelation last week. And, uh, and so we're going to, uh, God just kind of put it on my heart that we really needed to understand our design, our custom, how God has made us. And we need to stop trying to wear other people's armor. Mm -hmm. And so uh, um, you'll understand that more when you know what your gifts are. So, uh, so when it fits, you know you can hit. Amen? Amen. All right. So. You say, okay, well, I get that, I, I understand. So what is it that I'm supposed to wear? Well, if I can't wear saw, if I can't, and if I can't, and I don't know, well, God tells us. We find it in Ephesians 6.13. Simply says this, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. And then he goes on and he just breaks it down. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. Put on the belt. The belt protects your waist, protects your loins, protects your integrity. Put on your belt of truth. And then you know that on that belt, everything else that they would put on would be anchored or connected to that belt. So the belt of truth then was connected then to the body armor or the breastplate of righteousness. So not only was my midsection protected, but now my heart is protected as well. Then it says to put on the shoes of peace. In other words, uh, 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 where I am traveling, where I am going, where my feet are taking me, now I'm protected in my destination, amen? So now my, 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 my feet, I got my waist, I got my, and then, the Bible says, in all of that, hold up the shield of faith to stop the arrows. My wife reminded me something of last week, something that I, I said a long time ago, but, but it, when she said it, it's like, oh, I forgot about that. But that, the, the Bible, I love how it says to stop the arrows of the devil. I love that. Because like in this room, you give me a baseball bat and you get close to me, I'm gonna wear you out, right? But if you have a bow and an arrow, you can be a long way away. I can't see it coming. I just look up, boom, all of a sudden. Where'd that come from? And what the Bible is telling me is that I have to have a shield of faith. I have to be able to believe it even if I don't see it. That God, you're protecting me from the work of the enemy. That God, you're protecting my family. You are protecting my heritage. You are protecting, you are protecting. Even if I don't see it, feel it, God, I know what you're doing. And then, finally, it says, put on your helmet of salvation. Not, 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 not souls. Helmet, but put on the helmet of salvation. Protect your minds, your emotions, your, protect your, your thoughts. And then take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. See, again, too many of us are, are caught up on, well, look at them. They're... they're why didn't anything bad happen? I, I want to be like that. I want that. 
well, look at where they live and look at how and look what they drive. And we get so caught up in all of these things. Contentment. Okay, either that was like an amen or that's like a stop, one of the two. I don't know which one that was. Wow. Is that like a fire alarm or something? Huh? Oh, fiery dart, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Come on. She's on point. All right. Well, that was awkward. Okay. So um, let's just take a moment right now. Lord, we just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for all that are gathered. And I just want to take a moment right now. There, there, there may be somebody here who, you know, Lord, as we think about that scripture again that says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord, your word tells us that you knew us. <laughs> You know, it was long before we took our first breath. And, and Lord, along with that, you created us with purpose. You created us with calling. Lord, you designed us in a certain way. There's no accident that we're working where we work or living where we live. Or uh, You have given us each an assignment. And yes, our assignments may be different, but Lord, you are the one that brings them all together for your glory. So Lord, maybe there's someone here today that you can't start, you can't begin, you can't uh, get a clear sense of your identity because you've, you've tried to fill it with, with psychics or you've tried to fill it with uh, so many other things and, 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 and your true identity always starts with Christ. Your true purpose, your true fulfillment always starts with Christ. Everything else is temporary. Everything else is passing. Everything else is fading. But only what we do for the Lord will last. Maybe there's somebody here today that says, you know what, Pastor, I, I need to I need to Man, I need to get right with the Lord. I need to get back into my calling. I need to get back into my purpose. I need to get back to freedom. If that's you today, will you just here in just a second? I'm not going to take too long, but I just want to give you an opportunity to either make Christ the Lord of your life or just to rededicate your life to him. That's you on the count of three. Will you raise your hand so we can pray with you? I'm not going to call you to stand up. I just want you to just raise your hand. If that's you, let me see your hand. One, two, three. God bless you. I see your hands. God bless you. I see your hands. Any others? Any others? All right. Thank you. Let's pray this prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you for creating me just wonderfully and awesomely. Lord, I am not a mistake. I have been called according to your purpose. I have been gifted according to your grace. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for uh, getting up from the grave. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Thank you for giving me purpose. Now, Holy Spirit, empower me to walk how you created me to. In my purpose, in my calling, in my assignment, because it'll give you glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.